It's great to join you as we talk about more freedom and more tolerance uh, in Iran. The Iranian regime remains the leading state sponsor of terrorism, continues to defy warnings from the international community to abandon its nuclear program, and blatantly violates its treaty obligations, not to mention its blatant disregard for human rights. Iran's threatened to wipe one of our closest allies, Israel, off the map. They've violated multiple legally binding arms embargoes established by the UN Security Council, and they continue to violate international restrictions by advancing their ballistic missile program. Iran's a force for destruction and destabilization in the Middle East and around the world. The Iranian regime funds and provides weapons to the Shia militias in Iraq, provides arms and military forces to the brutal Assad regime uh, in Syria, uh, supports Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon, and provides advanced weapons to Houthi rebels in Ye Yemen. Hundreds of U.S. military personnel in Iraq were either killed or injured by IED sponsored by Iranian forces. And by the way, at this moment, Iran is trying their best to interfere uh, in America's election process with putting false information out there uh, on way more than a daily basis purporting to come uh, from other sources, but we know where it's coming from and we're going to do what we need to to stop that. As the coronavirus uh, began to spread around the world, the Iranian regime neglected the well-being of its own people. Uh, it suppressed information about the outbreak. Uh, Iran's leaders have refused offers that our country, uh, the United States, has given of assistance to combat the virus. and. Uh, they've revoked approval of support teams for international medical humanitarian organizations. It, it really seems that there's no limit that they won't go to uh, to harm the citizens of Iran. The Iranian people deserve better care and protection from their government. Uh, and they should be permitted to benefit from humanitarian assistance that's already exempt from sanctions. Uh, one, one obstacle to a better life for the Iranian people was the removal of uh, Soleimani when he was killed earlier this year. A failing regime in Iran has done everything it can to make that former commander of the Quds Force a martyr. But we all understand the cause of terrorism was his singular goal. Uh, he was a bad person. He spent his career far outside the boundaries of any civilized nation. Uh, and what that nation would consider acceptable behavior. He pretended to be a high-ranking military official, but really was a terrorist in a uniform. If your idea of a leading general is a general that leads in terrorist efforts, I think you've got the wrong idea of what a military leader is supposed to do. Uh, we understand that that's how people in control of Iran today, however, uh, look at what's a reasonable way to act uh, in a world that they want to be more, more term, in more turmoil, not less turmoil, the kind of daily turmoil that they create in their own country. Now, thankfully, that evil person, the determined, uh, determined enemy of freedom and democracy in the United States was eliminated, and frankly, uh, that elimination uh, allows us uh, some breathing room as they try to reconsolidate uh, and to determine who's going to get the power that Soleimani had taken for himself. Uh, despite the hopes uh, that the previous administration had for moderation, Iran has just simply increased its destructive activities after the Joint Comprehensive uh, Plan of Action. The JCPOA did not work. Strengthening sanctions on Iran is an appropriate response uh, to Iran's continued aggression. Uh, the Iranian sanction regime is the best tool we have to hold Iran accountable and one we re really need to continue to keep. We hate the impact that that uh, sanctions have had on the, uh, the people of Iran, but the people of Iran have paid a much bigger price than dealing with sanctions because of the bad behavior of their government. They pay that big price because their government does behave badly and behaves badly toward them. I think it's clear that they're activity of this government, the behavior of the Iranian government hasn't changed much uh, in the last uh, couple of years after the nuclear agreement. It continues to prevent a significant threat to U.S. interests uh, and they're going to have to be held accountable for that. Uh, I've long stood with you in your fight to ensure that we determine to never uh, forget the residents of Camp Ashraf, 
uh, or forget our commitment to the people who were there. We worked really hard jointly, you and I working together with many of my colleagues and many of my former colleagues uh, to see that we kept our word. I was able to visit so many of you in Albania just in, a couple of years ago. I was also uh, able to lead meetings of a congressional delegation on that same trip with Albanian leaders. Uh, I've had Albanian leaders since that trip, including the president, uh, in my office in Washington to talk about uh, the needs that need to be respected and the needs that need to be understood of people in um, in Albania. Now, another thing this really does, frankly, uh, it allows more time to be focused on Iran than the time we were focusing on getting people to safety uh, out of Camp Ashraf. Uh, but uh, it, it also uh, is important to look at the great accomplishments that they have made uh, in the building and the vitalization of uh, their new location in Albania. Hopefully that won't be a permanent location. Hopefully the permanent location will be a, an Iran where people can live in a tolerant and free way. Uh, there are many incredible achievements uh, that have been made throughout the years opposing the regime. We have to continue to focus on eliminating uh, imminent peril while losing sight of what's happening uh, in Iran uh, and to the Iranian people. Our concern can't just be being sure they don't attack us. Uh, or attack our friends outside of Iran, we need to be concerned about the daily attacks on the people of Iran who through their uprisings, their protests and strikes have been seeking regime, regime change uh, and we really see an ex uh, escalation of those protests uh, in the last two years. Um, people carry on that fight. Many of you either are involved in the fight directly or involved in doing what you can to encourage the fight from other places. Uh, and no matter how brutal the regime gets, no, much how, no matter how much physical or psychological torture, uh, no matter how harsh the sentence, how many uh, political prisoners are executed, uh, activists and journalists uh, abused in every single daily activity, uh, but you continue to lead in that fight. We have to listen to the message of the Iranian people as they chant down the dictators. Iranians deserve a secular government that respects the rule of law, freedom of speech, and ethnic and religious differences. The United States stands with the Iranian people who are putting their lives and their safety on the line every day to pursue that kind of future. I'm pleased to stand with you to resist the oppressive Iranian regime uh, in the cause of freedom and pleased to join you at this important event today.